We continue to preview the 2023 college football season here on Midwest Sportsnet, and today our stop is Lamoni, Iowa. We get to visit with Patrick Ross in his second season with the Graceland Yellow Jackets. And Coach, 4-7 and seven last season, and obviously a turnaround for the program that hadn't won a game in a number of years. So a big turnaround right there. Talk about year one and take us through the spring. Yeah, well, when, when we took over the program, they were having some struggles. You know, they lost 30, 30 straight games, and then we lost our first game, so 31 straight. So it was actually the longest losing streak in, in, in active in college football. Uh, so so to, to win four games, obviously that's not where our goal was. We wanted to win a lot more than that. Uh, but it was a, it was an exciting time, and to, to get that first win for the university and for the program was was really exciting. I, I've had some very big wins in my career. You know, I had coach at Lindenwood for 13 years and head coach at Ottawa for two. We've had some great runs. Uh, you know, actually, my first year at Lindenwood, we had the biggest turnaround in college football history. We went from three and eight to eleven and one in our first season there. Um, not quite that dramatic here at, at Graceland, however. You know that win against Evangel in Week Two was was incredible because one, if you know anything about the heart of America, and you know Evangel, it's a very solid program. They don't make mistakes. They do things right. They win football games. They're supposed to win, and they had us down twenty-one nothing in the first quarter. And when your team has lost thirty-one straight games and you're down twenty-one nothing, it's pretty much over. But our guys showed the the mindset that we're trying to build here, the tough attitude, the toughness, the the you know the belief in the belief in each other, the fight, and we came back from twenty-one nothing and, and won the first game and. In 31, so it was pretty exciting for the program, and and I really think it set the tone for the year. And, and all the games we won, we had to work for. I mean, it was hard. It was hard to win a football game in the heart. Um, so, but but our guys showed so much resiliency and toughness throughout the season, going through three quarterbacks, and you know, just a lot going on for us as, as a football program. But finding ways to win, finding ways to believe in each other, and really gave us a great foundation for this offseason to build the guys we have and to add you know add add, add some help in place where we thought we needed help. So we're excited moving forward to this football season. It's it's fun to watch and it's fun to see the improvement like that and and again what a dramatic turnaround four wins I know you mentioned it's not exactly what you wanted but there were some obstacles along the way and, and that includes what you talked about going through three quarterbacks Kate Ross who was named the Hart Conference Freshman of the Year quarterback for you and he did it in just six games of play he was injured uh, against Baker midway through the season but in his time out there threw for more than two thousand yards. 365 yards per game passing yards. And again, this is just through six games. He's coming back for you this year. Yeah, he was, he's an exciting player to watch. You know, he's a division one transfer to us from an FCS school in Pennsylvania. Uh, so, but, but he's a, he's a pretty dynamic playmaker. His ability to keep a play alive is really what helped him, you know, be able to pass for those yardage and, and, and along with, you know, obviously to, to have that kind of success from a, from a number standpoint, you got to have people around you. The receiver stepped up, did a good job. Uh, the offensive line pass protection was really good, gave him opportunities to, to sit back there and make decisions. And we kind of uh, adjusted our offense a little bit as the season went along because the stuff we thought was going to work and the stuff our offense was designed through uh, wasn't there. You know, that's that part of our game wasn't there. We were having trouble running the football. And so then, you know, then our RPO system is off a little bit because nobody cares. They're going to drop eight. So we really had to figure out ways to still be able to, to pass the football uh, in more of a drop back scheme to where we had some time to, to assess things and the quarterback had to be able to make decisions. And, you know, so there's some there's a lot of areas that, that K needs to improve on. Um, but he did a he did a good job of, of understanding the offense. He's been running the offense since he was little. You know, it's the same offense since he was in grade school that he's been understanding and watching and, and learning. Um, so but but no, he's been he's you know, he's had an offseason. Obviously, he was he was injured in game six last year, a pretty, pretty dramatic looking injury. It was it was pretty ugly. Um, so uh, but the recovery process went well. He made it back for the last five practices of spring, played in the spring game. Um, so he's still got to work on his strength and, and those kind of things. And, but but we're excited that, that, that he's healthy now and, and feeling good good about his, his arm and feeling confident. Um, but, you know, we also had a couple of guys step in there and do really well throughout the season. You know, Judd Roberts came in as a true freshman, not expecting to play at all. He wasn't going to take a snap. At, you know, he was going to redshirt for sure. But he stepped in and, and you know, after the we went through, we, we lost Cade. Then we played another guy and it didn't work out so well. So then we brought Judd in and Judd finishes. She's in really strong. So I had a great spring, too. So we're excited. You know, we got uh, we had a redshirt transfer in there, too. Uh, so we have three guys at quarterback we think are, are pretty good players that they can really help us elevate our offense. But, you know, the, the other thing about our entire offense is here's really one really cool thing. When, when we took over the program, the offense was number 96 ranked offense in the country. Uh, and, and so that's, you know, and so we, we finished the year this year, I believe we finished at number 10 in total offense in the country. So we went from 96 to 10, but of our 11 starters, 
uh, that, that, that played for us this year, like kind of the initial 11 starters, seven of them were on the team from a year ago. So, you know, we had, we added a fresh a redshirt freshman, then a true freshman quarterback. So we have freshman quarterback. We added a junior college running back. We had a, a, a true freshman center and a true freshman wide receiver. The seven other guys besides those guys were all returners. So it was really cool for them to see that if you, if your mind tells you you can do something, you can get it done. These seven of those guys were on a team that were number 96 ranked offense in the country and finished this year number 10. So it was, it was really exciting to, to watch those guys enjoy that success as an offense. I love that story, Coach. That's, that is fantastic. And, man, what a testament then to what can be done uh, in, in just about any situation. Well, Ross wears number one. Uh, Gerald Monroe wears number two. And I think that's one of the best one-two combinations that uh, I could think of throughout the country on any level. Monroe, fantastic season. All-American, 1,500 receiving yards last year, 16 receiving touchdowns as well, 16 yards per catch as a matter of fact, and he comes back for you after a solid first year for you. I agree. And you know how you know how college football is these days. There was a lot of people recruiting him. So the fact that he's coming back and and putting on a yellow jacket uniform again says a lot about how how, how he, what he thinks about our university and our and our kids and his teammates and his coaching staff. It really says a lot because he honestly could have gone almost anywhere he wanted. He, he he's had a ton of success. He's that kind of a player too. You know, in my years at Lindenwood. Uh, we had 16 guys sign NFL contracts, four of which were wide receivers. And I remember the first, you know, after the first couple of times going out throwing, Cade, Cade Ross, the quarterback, came in and was like, he's like, hey, he might be as good as anybody we ever saw play at Lindenwood. And and I was like, there's no chance. There's no way that there was a kid on this roster that couldn't move the football was, you know, is a, is, is a, is a, you know, better than anybody that ever played at Lindenwood, but he is, he's right up there with them. I mean, he's pretty darn close to those guys. And, and if, you know, he's going to have a shot playing at the next level, he's that good of a football player. He's dynamic. He adjusts to the football as good as anybody I've ever seen. He, he, he knows when to get separation because the receiver separation is good, but not all the time. Sometimes you don't want, it's the timing of your separation. That's the most important. And he knows how to, how to get separation when he needs to. Uh, and he's just, you know, here, here's the other thing about Gerald that when you watch him play, he is the best blocker on our team. He's better blocker than our offensive line showed this year. He's a better blocker than the running backs. He is the best blocker on our team. Uh, so, you know, he's just he's just a fantastic playmaker out there, and, and he can do it in space. He can do it in traffic. He can run the football. So he's we think about playing him a little bit on defense this year, too, playing him both ways a little bit because he has played some corner, uh, but he's special. Well, I'm, I'm sure anytime he's on the field, I mean, it's going to be a, an opportunity for something dynamic to happen. We're speaking now with Coach Patrick Ross from Graceland in year two, and we're here on the summit. I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel, Midwest Sports Net. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. We're talking college football today, and you look at the defensive side of the ball, and it was a defense coach last year uh, that did give up some points uh, uh, on, in a number of games. And, but you bring back a number of players also. It's a very young roster all the way yeah. around. Uh, among those, Jacob Morales at linebacker. Yeah, no, we were extremely young all, all the way around as a football team. I think we only had a handful of juniors, two seniors on the whole team. Um, so, so we were we were really young. So we re bring back almost everybody. Um, and, you know, obviously this is college football, so not everybody who played last year may play this year. There's going to be some challenges, some battles, and and we you know we're we're trying to improve. They're trying to improve, and once the guys learn a system. You know, who knows who knows what will happen from a personnel standpoint? Because there's there's some guys. You know, we played freshmen, but some some kids can come in ready to play college football as freshmen. Then others need that year to develop, but they'll still be just as good, if not better, than the kid who can play as a freshman. So we saw a lot of growth on our football team, especially in our secondary. But yes, we gave up way too many points, especially early in the year. We weren't we weren't in sync. We were missing tackles. We were blowing coverages. You know, stuff that that young defenses do, and, and it cost us in some games where you know, we, you know, had we not given up so many points, we would have had a good chance to win the football game. But I'll tell you what, Coach Rowe and Coach McQuillan, our defensive staff, and, and Coach Riles did a great job this offseason of identifying our weaknesses and getting them corrected for for spring and now moving towards the fall. But uh, yeah, you mentioned Jacob Morales. He is one of those true freshmen that came in ready to play from a great program down in Texas. Hard worker, you know, one of those three point five GPA kids. But he's outstanding. You know, Isaiah Slaughter, returning starter. He was also an all, honorable mention, all, all conference guy. Um, our entire defensive front did a great job last year of being able to contain things at times. And so we're, we're excited about where we are as a full program. We felt we really need to focus on, on the secondary and get better in the secondary. So our, our DB coaches were challenged big time this spring to to be able to, to, to be able to stop somebody and know what they're doing and line up correctly. And, and so they made huge strides during that during the offseason. 
Coach Tom Troth comes back, a punter for your last season. We'll have somebody new kicking this year as well. And you know, we're talking about Monroe a little earlier. He's somebody that was a uh, somebody who would be able to return the ball for you as well. Talk about your special teams and what we might see this year. Well, we had you know our special teams play overall was was really good. We were really good on kickoff. We did a decent job on kickoff return. Trey Blake was a you know second team All Conference return man. Um, punt team was good. We didn't make any massive mistakes there, our, but our field goal, our field goal and extra point team was atrocious. It was it was one of the worst I've seen in college football since I've been coaching. Uh, we couldn't get extra points. We couldn't if we could, if we couldn't if we didn't make the kick, then we weren't protecting well, or the, you know, or the snap was not on point. So we had some major issues with our field goal extra point team, which forced us to have to go for two, probably more often than we went than we actually tried to kick. So we had to address the kicking game this off season. And so we, we've done that. We're bring, we've got some good kickers coming in to compete for the job. Uh, from a punting standpoint, Tom Trost, a great story. He came to us from Australia and he came in, he kind of, I wouldn't say he's a walk on because we recruited him, uh, but we didn't know what we were going to get out of Tom. He was just one of those great kids that we, we built a relationship with, liked him in the recruiting process, brought him in and we're in our first team meeting and we thought he was going to play DB or something. He said, oh, I'm a quarterback. I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's let him throw the ball a little bit. Well, quarterback didn't work. So, we're like, okay, let's go put you at safety. So we put him at safety. A couple practices into that, we're like, okay, safety's probably not your spot either. And then we're saying, hey, we don't have a punter. We need a punter. And we're like, you're from Australia where they play rugby and they kick ball all the time. Can you kick? He said, oh, sure, coach, I'll, I'll kick. All of a sudden, he's booming those things. And then the best part about Tom is he's, he, he's, he's got the mindset of a quarterback and a defensive back. You know, sometimes, you know, you don't know what you're going to get. So he doesn't even think about kicking. He just naturally goes out there, no, no stress, no – no, um, you know, he's not scared out there. He just catches the ball and kicks it. And he ended up doing a fantastic job. Ended up being one of our – he's one of our team leaders. He's the guy that gets everybody excited. Um, he's just a great uh, energy to have around your football program. You're always going to pick it up. You know, we, we're, we're pushing ourselves on having huge energy as a football program because we can control that. You know, we control the negative, we control the positive. So we always push and have positive energy, and Tom brings that every day. Uh, so and now he started kicking. All of a sudden, we're, we're in spring. And he's kicking off. He's putting it in the end zone. He's kicking field goals. So our, our special teams coordinator, Coach McQuinn, was like, why the heck didn't you tell us this in the fall? He goes, you didn't ask. So, <laughs> so we could have been using him all along. But, he, you know, we got some kickers coming and compete. And then we got another punter in there, Parker Kerf, who's an Iowa kid who transferred to us from Upper Iowa. He's pushing Tom. So we've got some, some competition going on our special team. So we, we will make drastic improvements with that part of our game. I'm certain of it. Coach, you were talking about uh, the fact that, I mean, it is a different era. There's recruiting that goes on and all that. But uh, having so many coming back, though, on a team that was clearly very young and and uh, just, you know, having the opportunity to grow like that, how big is that then having one year under their belts again? I know you've mentioned it, but talk about that luxury. And, and they know what to expect from your team, your staff, and what you bring to the table. Yeah, you know, as, as a coach over, you know, I've been a head coach now, so I'm going on my 17th year as a head football coach. And to me, the biggest challenge every year is, is can you get your kids? Because we're all going to have good players. Everybody we play is going to have good players, just like we are. So, you know, it's I, I think to me the challenge is which coaches can get their players to peak at 1 o'clock on Saturday or peak at 7 p.m. on Saturday, no matter with all the distractions these college kids have. You got to get them through practice. Obviously, I love a good Tuesday practice. I love a good Wednesday practice. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. If you can't transition that to Saturday at game time, it doesn't matter. So I really pride on myself and our coaches on getting our kids to peak at the right time. And, and our kids know what that expectation is. And throughout the season, we did it sometimes, and then we didn't do it other times this year. So it's going to be our consistency of getting our kids to, to embrace the moment, peak at the right time. And I think we're going to see, I mean, we're going into the season extremely confident, which every team should, you know, if, I don't care if you didn't win a game last year, if you're not going in confident, find a new profession uh, or, or do something else. But our, our kids are going into the season feeling like they can compete every game, have a chance to win every game. And if they didn't, then I'm not doing my job. So, so we have high expectations of our football program this year. And, and I'm excited to watch our team grow from where we were in November to where we're going to be in August. All right, Coach. I'm excited, too. I'm enjoying listening to it. Love the stories, and I appreciate that. And I, I know every team has their stories, but you've had some interesting ones this year, and I'm sure it's going to be a fun year, too, for you. As we uh, look ahead at your schedule really quickly, August 26th, you all host Doan, out-of-conference play there, and then, well, divisional play, a, a little bit of a crossover in the Hart Conference, September 2nd at Central Methodist, and then your Hart Conference play after the bye week starts on October 14th. 
Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be a big, good, tough schedule. The heart's always tough, and then adding Doan. Doan's a lot like us. I think that you know they're very similar to us last year. Um, they got a really good football team coming back, and I think that they're gonna they're gonna make some huge improvements too. So I think it's really good good test for both of our teams, for Doan and for us, to get out there and compete. Because again, I think we're similar. I think we're both looking to make a huge jump this year in our conferences. Uh, but after we get through that week, you know, then we got to start focusing on you know again Central got a new coach. I know Coach Brown really well. He's gonna do a fantastic job. Uh, and, you know, we've had some new coaches in our league and everybody seemed to just be finding great coaches with uh, putting together good staffs. I'm watching the kids are signing. So it's going to be it's going to be exciting. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a challenge every week. And and again, I think, you know, those who can get their kids to peak at the right time and and, and make make the best of each moment is, is going to be the team that comes out on top. And, you know, obviously I'm banking on, on these yellow jackets to be pretty special. I see no reason not to. It looks like that they're continuing to grow and, and uh, your team. Looking ahead to 2023, there is a lot in store. The future looks bright for Graceland. Coach Patrick Ross, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit. We appreciate that. We will follow you all this year. and look forward to getting to visit with you again, sir. Awesome. Thank you. I really appreciate what you guys do for NAI. It's huge, you know, for these kids to have a, a something outlet to go to and check out for the families to go and look at. You guys do a great job. I, you know, I watched some of your analysis of the, of the positions you guys do. So that's huge for those kids to – to get some recognition. So we really appreciate you. Thank you, sir.